going. It's bright right now. The whole podcast studio is looking beautiful. It's looking a little less podcast studio is looking a little less cluttery just because not because there's anything else out of it. I just finally moved some stuff here and there. It's in by moved. I mean, basically pushed all the way into a corner. Um, but no, back here at the studio, it's about 542 PM. If you looked outside, it looks like it's like 842 because it still gets dark out at 5 PM, which is complete bullshit. Um, I was never someone that really thought that, oh, I'm going to care if it got, if it gets dark out early, but every year goes on, I get more annoyed that damn, it feels way later than, uh, it actually is, but no, so we're here in the studio and without further ado, welcome back to episode 26 of the Mac and show Q claps from nobody. I'm literally the only person here. Like even when, uh, but welcome back. Um, but no, I'm in the office right now. It's a little later. Usually even when I do these, other than if it's on a weekend, I'm not usually the only person here. Sometimes the in-house stylist will be there. There might be a couple other people working around and everything, even if it's later, but I'm quite literally the only person in the office right now. It's, it's a little scary. I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, it's in an office building. Yeah. There's security and stuff like that, but it's still a little bit scary. So I'm the only one here. Um, I was going to go home earlier today, but I want to, how it will look, no clue, but I want to find out how to actually like get on a good schedule of putting episodes out. Don't exactly know how the fuck that's going to happen, but I feel like, you know, once manifesting here, once like I actually get more people to listen, watch, et cetera, then I can establish like I, every Monday, 11 AM, that's when an episode's coming out, but Regardless, whoever does watch them, fucking shout out to you sitting here listening to me spew my bullshit, and I love it. But no, welcome back. Um, I do not. Well, hopefully, I I'll have to listen to it back. But I don't believe that I sound like shit like I did last episode. I listened to it back, and I was like, wow, because I talked about it in the episode where I knew I felt like shit. I was like coughing up, trying to actually I should get a water really quick. I was coughing up, just like clearing my throat every 10 minutes. No, it was bad. Like I might still maybe, maybe sound a little nasally, but between last episode and this episode, I feel like a million bucks. Um, I feel way better. And now I'm just here in the heart of West Hollywood, bringing you another award-winning, award-winning podcast. But no, since I was last, since we were last here, I'm trying to think of anything life updates wise has happened other than it's just been typical workflow. Um, I'm trying to think I learned some new photography skills to be able to use. I wouldn't even be able to know what that equipment's called, but it's for taking just like more high tier product shots of like, whether it's of the footwear or whatever it may be. So I finally learned how to level up a little bit more in photography, but I want to be able to know like If I had to say, I'm very grateful that all this shit is set up here. I would have to know how to like take it off site where I'm confident enough now with like podcasting, where if someone was just like, yo, I need a podcast film, but we're doing it at this random location. I would be able to go and set up a podcast for them. But the photography shit, that's like way extra. So I'm going to figure that out at some point, but I'm trying to think what has happened since, uh, we spoke last. Oh, watch the Emmys. Um, the Emmys were good. I mean, it's, I've turned into one of those people that actually really likes watching award shows live. I used to not give a shit about them. Now it's kind of fun. I just like watching live shit. Football's, which I'll talk about is definitely coming to an end at some point. And by some point, I mean very soon in February, but, um, no, we were watching the Emmys and I didn't watch like, and it made me know that I really have to get more into TV shows. Cause I have not watched probably half the shows that were nominated for Emmys, but I knew, I knew what they were from the bear succession, the crown, Ted Lasso, Wednesday, fucking, um, beef, etc. Like the only one of those that I watched was Wednesday, which is funny. And I, whatever Wednesday was, Wednesday was very, very entertaining. Thank you very much. And it didn't get it. I guess I got enough credit, but no Wednesday with Jenna Ortega was super fire. It just like, gave you that like 
I don't even know what I would equate it as. Like, I, it felt like it was always fall. They were at this, like, school. It gave me, like, weird Harry Potter mixed with, like, boarding school mixed with, you know, crazy shit happening. And Jenna Ortega is obviously great at uh, acting. The rest of the cast was great. There's going to be a season two because it left on a cliffhanger. But, no, Wednesday was fire, so I think it definitely deserved that nomination. Um, and going into the Emmys with – the big dogs that were definitely going to win from Succession, The Bear, etc. Uh, I didn't understand it as much until today when I was talking to someone about it that I didn't know at the Emmys, you, like the show itself can put themselves in a category for a better chance to win something. And it makes more sense, right? Like at the Grammys, like you're getting put in a category, like you're getting put in the pop, in the rock, in the hip hop, etc. Like, like the Academy's putting you in that. At the Emmys, you can submit yourself as any type of genre, so you can just be in that genre and possibly win an award, which makes so much more sense because The Bear, which I haven't seen yet, and I love Jeremy Allen White, but The Bear won so many awards, but it was also in a comedy category, which I didn't understand because from the clips I've seen of The Bear, it's not funny, and that's it. I don't think it was intended to be funny, so that's not a bad thing, but it's more of like a serious... I don't know about a drama, but it's more of a serious show. And it made more sense to me too, because Succession was in drama. Succession gets nominated for like the most Emmys all the time since it's been out. And they brought it up on the red carpet earlier that makes so much more sense that like if you're a show going up against someone in the drama category, Succession was not only good and loved by everyone who watches it, this year for the nomination, it was also on its finale season which means the people voting for that show know that like, oh, this season, they gave us a season that now we're never going to be able to see again in like a good way where it's like that they put so much more into that season because they knew it was the last one ever opposed to other shows that like, yeah, they might have given us a great season, but we get more of them. Like the bear, you're going to get more of, um, I don't know if there's more of the crown. Uh, I don't know if there's more, whatever, but Successions was the finale. So I kind of get why it won so many awards because again, you're not going to see it again. It was a good show. I need to watch Succession cause I get remind, I don't know. It just gives me that like power mixed with suits mixed with a ton of other shit. So it definitely seems like a good show. I got to watch Succession, but they won a boatload of awards. Uh, the bear I think took home almost everything in terms of like their categories from lead role lead female role supporting cast like I know Kieran Culkin won I think best actor in a drama series which I love that the Culkin brothers like had different trajectories which is dope where it's like Macaulay Culkin was fucking huge when he was younger from Richie Rich Home Alone uh I, fr I know he was in something else but just like tore the world up when he was young and then he decided like oh, okay like i'm i'm good i don't need to do this anymore and then kieran culkin who was probably also like child acting but in one of the biggest shows ever succession as he got older so it's cool to see like those brothers absolutely killing it um but at just different points of their life because obviously like how could you not root for the culkin brothers and macaulay culkin's married to brenda song like that's dope so shout out the culkin brothers the emmys were good um I'm really trying to think of like, I didn't watch like all of it. Cause like, I mean, again, I was not out here watching much more than Netflix shows this year, if we're going to be completely honest, but, um, no. So there was that I'm trying to think, uh, Oh, Quinta Brunson won an award, which was dope because I think that's so cool. Like how you see certain people's levels of where the fuck they go, where I remember Quinta Brunson doing like sketch comedies or just like YouTube skits and shit like that. Now the show that she basically helped create and write is winning Emmys. And that's got to be such a dope feeling to go from like, yeah, I was just doing these funny little skits, whatever. Now, like the thing I created is winning Emmys and I am winning Emmys in it. Like that's got to be such a good feeling to sit there and just be like, yeah, I really like came up hundred percent came up. So shout out Quinta Brunson. Um, I'm going, I'm doing better. I'm going off like lists of fun things to talk about. Um, oh my God, even though they suck right now and by they, I mean the Lakers, um, LeBron is still dominating year 21. And I saw a stat today that LeBron has played against 35% of NBA players that have ever played the NBA. 
do with that as you would. Like, that's fucking insane. Like, LeBron has played against almost half of everyone who has ever played in the NBA. Like, that dude's longevity is crazy. I can, well, I'm going to say this very lightly because I never want it to happen. I can't wait for them to study his body when that time comes to see just like, all right, this dude's muscles were made of like stone. And like, this dude is like the most athletic person to ever step foot on earth. Cause like him doing it 21 years later. And there was funny that there was uh they were playing the Clippers <clears throat> and LeBron just put Paul George on a poster and someone tweeted like, imagine telling Indiana Pacers, Paul George, when he faced up against Miami LeBron that 12 years later, this is still going to be happening. And Paul George took it good. He was just like, yeah, nah, I'm not going to lie. Like He's busting my ass still. And LeBron is. And the Lakers are kind of whack right now, but the Lakers started whack last year and ended up really good. So I still have confidence that the Lakers will uh, figure that shit out. So obviously hoping Los Angeles will be able to bring one home. Um, I'm trying to think that it's a – we were talking about it also in the office earlier today, this place called Heavy Handed, that I – when you think about it, places that have like their shit, like the Northeast, like Maine, Rhode Island, like they have seafood. Like Miami has very good like Spanish food, Cuban food, etc. Like Los Angeles does ha- does have really good Mexican food, and then New York City has like probably the best Italian, etc. But LA, I think at this point, is the burger capital of the world. I in no like I have no doubt that Los Angeles is the burger capital of the world with the best cheeseburgers out there from smash burgers to everything. Cause like, if you think about it, you have burgers, ever wow. burgers, never say die easy street burger for the win burger. She wrote heavy handed, um, Chris and Eddie's. And then obviously you have your chains that are all out here, but it's crazy how many like mom and pop shop burger places here that just are absolutely amazing like their smash burgers is awesome every burger is also the same so like you know we're not going to go into like this place has the best so whatever it's all the fucking same but la absolutely has the best burgers in the country and honestly after watching mike malak's vlogs that when he goes abroad to like he's done it in mexico he's done it in germany he's done it in london he's done it in dubai i think or fucking Riyadh or wherever they were in the middle east um i genuinely think that LA has the best burgers in the world. So I'm going to stand on that business um, 100%. But on top of food, call me immature, but I still have not came around to raw food yet. And I just do not know how people like love raw food like that. And obviously it's like different cultures that love that shit. And I get it. Um, but I see videos of people just like searing the outside of something and still eating it. Or obviously there's sushi or people like love like a lot of egg yolk on shit. I only like an egg yolk if it's like truthfully if there's an egg with it like fried rice or an over easy egg or something like that. But when people just be putting egg yolk on shit or like fish and I don't know if and I think it does that eating shit like that comes with maturity in your age because I'm still relatively immature. I don't like raw food. I think those two things match up. Not a fan of it. I like my shit cooked. Now I'm not someone who like needs my shit like well, well done. I'm, I'm a good like medium rare person, but when people just be eating their like meat red and bleeding and they don't only need it seared or like obviously all their fish, they don't care that it's like barely cooked or I'm trying to think like they're fine with eating fucking egg yolks. I'm just like, I can't do, I just can't do the raw shit. It kind of, um, just makes me feel like, like, I don't know how people do this. I don't know if it's like a fucking immunity kick or some shit like that, but not the only thing I'm doing raw is these bad boys. And I'm pissed that I didn't bring, my Stanley because if you I was up bro I was on fucking stock x earlier and they are reselling that pink Stanley on stock x for 250 dollars that's fucking insane and there's a tweet about like this person tweeted that their kid got bullied at school for having a fake Stanley and I have no idea how some of this stuff like 
and I, I really don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it. I really don't think there's any science behind it. I think sometimes shit just happens. And with Stanley, I think that's just like what it was. Where I do not understand the crave of the Stanley. I have a Stanley specifically because a box of them got sent to the office for free. And I picked it up and, you know, call me a poser, whatever. Call me dumb. But it actually makes me drink more water. Just having that thing in my hand, I'm just like, all right, I'm just going to I'm gonna drink this until it's done. And then I'm going to go fill it up again and I'm going to drink that until it's done until I cannot drink any more water. And so Stanley's definitely make me feel like I'm drinking way more water. But the absolute craze of like, bro, people were lined up outside of targets. People were hopping over Starbucks things and literally robbing Starbucks of their Stanley. And I just do not understand the craze like that. Like, yeah, it's a cool water bottle. I like it. Like, and the old Stanleys kind of look whack. These ones are kind of new, but I just do not understand like who it, it wasn't someone made it cool. It wasn't like, oh, this crazy A-list celebrities only drinking Stanleys. I know there was that viral video of this woman's car that caught on fire and like blew up basically. And the Stanley was like, okay. And there was still ice in the Stanley. I know that that one went crazy and that was a little bit of like, the start of it but then it just blew up and it now became like a sneakerhead type shit where it's like yo i'm gonna buy this and resell the fuck out of it so the guy who's behind stan which is funny enough the guy who's behind marketing for stanley was the same dude who brought crocs back which i always want to and i'm gonna sound like a broken record to people here who might listen to this but i find that shit so cool because how are you, like, that good at this type of shit? Like, you're the dude who single-handedly, like, your plan brought Crocs back and made Crocs, like, some shit that, like, Post Malone and Justin Bieber and, like, all these other A-list celebrities are going to wear and have shit that they can put on it and be cool. And then you're like, okay, cool, I'm glad I did that. I'm going to go work at this cup company, and I'm going to make this really cool, too. Like, how... I, I would love to sit with that person. I don't know who he is. I read his name in an article, forgot what his name was, but... I would love to sit with that dude for like 30 minutes. Be like, who, what, when, where, why, how? Like, I don't understand your method. I, how does your brain work? Can I get a piece of your brain? Can we do the Elon Musk chip where maybe like you inject it in your brain and then I get some of your brain? I don't know. But when I see that shit, I'm just like, yeah, I just do not understand how people are like so like just built different. Like you, you that, that person just built different 100%. And speaking of other people that are built different, and I knew I just touched on it earlier, fucking NFL players. Like, first off, obviously, they're mostly all of them are like 6'5", 200 pounds of pure muscle. I get that. But the Kansas City Chiefs played the Miami Dolphins at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City over last weekend. It was like negative 7 degrees out during that game. Now, first off, I remember getting, obviously these are grown men, so chill, but I remember getting school off back home when we were younger for like cold days because kids had to walk to school and like not everyone had a ride, whatever. So it's like, if it got to be in the negatives, we just would not have school that day or something would have to be done, but it was mostly just like, oh, we're not having school that day. To think that like, yo, you're going to go out there and fucking hit people and tackle people in negative seven degree weather. Mm -mm. I would not. And why does every fucking stadium in the world not have a retractable dome? I do not understand that. But I also somewhat get it. And I'm only talking about the negative degrees here because if you go, if you look at like Soldier Field with the Cubs or the Buffalo Bills or whatever north stadiums are going to get snow snow games are awesome they're like always memorable they're hilarious to like the people are diving in the snow again like it's snow games are always fun but to play a football in negative seven degree weather has got to be hell and i heard will compton from busting with the boys talking about it where he's just like yeah like you just lather up your uh arms and legs and shit with vaseline wear like a pole like whatever and just he was given like his way to like be able to deal with playing and weather that cold. Now it's just like, I just don't understand it. Again, snow I can do, but negative seven. Like I simply, if I was in the NFL and they came and were like, yeah, yeah, our next week game, it's probably going to be like negative seven ish. I simply would just 
accidentally tripped on something and I would enter the DL. That's that's probably what would happen that week. And they'd be like, oh, shit, Casey, what happened? It's like, oh, I hyperextended something. Like, I'm going to be out this week. They're going to be like, oh, shit, okay. And then, no, because I am not playing in ne- negative uh, seven-degree weather. That's just not happening. So, but, no, Kansas City Chiefs beat the Dolphins. Obviously, the Steelers had to get taken down by the Buffalo Bills. Baker Mayfield came on top against the Cowboys, which, like, was it against the Cowboys? Who'd Baker beat? Who'd the Co- oh wait? Who'd Baker beat? I'm trying to think of wait. Why am I? I'm so mad that it's gonna come to me. But Buccaneers. Oh nope, I spelled that wrong. Buccaneers versus. It wasn't the Rams. Who'd they play? And they didn't play the Bills. Um, oh my God, they beat the Eagles. Eagles fumbled again. Buccaneers beat the Eagles, Lions beat the Rams, and Green Bay beat uh, Dallas, which is crazy. Like Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys is probably the biggest fraud organization out there. Absolutely. Like First off, they're a team that's always valued. Like They're one of the most. Shout out Jerry Jones, even though like that dude's probably a horrible person. But valued always at the highest like in all of sports up there with like the Yankees, Golden State Warriors, them. Um and they're usually good during the regular season, but the second the literally like you saw this year, the second a playoff hits, the Cowboys are donezo. So shout out to Brennan on that one. My friend Brennan is a very big Cowboys fan and I don't think his lifetime I don't think he'll ever see a Cowboys Super Bowl. I don't even know if he'll see an appearance. So there's that. I'm front running absolutely for the Detroit Lions to win the Super Bowl. That would be awesome. Dan Campbell, such a football guy, awesome coach, fucking big jack dude, like, sick. Obviously, Jared Goff, shitty situation, getting traded from L.A. there. They went, like, 1-16 in his first year. Terrible. Now they're on the up and up. I want the Detroit Lions to keep winning. I think it would be a great story. And if it's not the Detroit Lions, I'm huge. I'm a big Lamar Jackson guy big Lamar Jackson guy I don't know how you can't be a big Lamar Jackson guy like that dude just fucking rocks like he's just awesome first off he had everyone talking shit about him early on and then he was just like yo I'm good as shit and then he continued to be really good as shit and he's on Baltimore and he's like friends with Kodak Black and from Broward County and just he's a dude like fucking Lamar Jackson is just the bro like I would love to hang out with Lamar Jackson I feel like that'd be a fun time um so yeah if it's not the Lions I want the Ravens because big Lamar Jackson energy. So now that was this week in the NFL. Um, obviously that was a big rant about how I'm not a fan of the cold, but if we're being completely honest, who is like, I'm a fan of the cold when it comes to like, I'm going to go skiing. I'm going to, you know, chill out, drink some hot chocolate. I'm a vibe out. But when it comes to like, Oh, you're going to go play football. You can miss me with that shit. Another thing that I thought, I was going to continuously tell people to miss me with, but I just ended up being like, it's one of those things that you kind of just have to sit there and realize like, you know what? Maybe people are right. It's whatever. Is that for the last, geez, eight months, I want to say, I've just been getting little bits and pieces here. Oh, oh, you look like, you look like that guy in jury duty. Like, oh, you look like that guy in jury duty. Oh, you look like that guy. And I used to be mad. I used to be like, yo, what the fuck? Like, Stop telling me I look like a guy on jury duty. What the hell? Because I never saw the show. And then I still haven't seen the show, funny enough. But I know who Ronald is. I'm aware at this point me and Ronald look alike. But I've had Harry Jowsey come up to me and say it. I've had Alex Warren come up to me and say it. Everyone in the office will tell me. I'll literally like meet someone for the first time, as which has happened, and someone being like, yo, you look like the guy from jury duty. I, I went as the guy from jury duty, Ronald on Halloween because that's just how easy it was to make the comment or to make the co- costume like literally got his shirt made a juror badge called a day so I've I'm very content I'm okay that me and Ronald look alike Ronald you should come on the podcast it would just be like yo like we're looking at each other um so shout out Ronald and jury duty and 
I just need to watch the show at this point because there's been so many comparisons um, that, like, I guess we're just the same type of person. Um, oh, going back to NFL talk too. This is going to sound so bad, but I got just, it's just always been within me. One of my favorite things about sports fandom is just like pure hating. Just hating. Like, just the pure level of like how into it sports fans get, I find so funny. Like, first off, and this is all revolving around Lions versus Rams, because Kelly Stafford, Matt Stafford's wife, came out with a statement like, oh, people were booing our kids. Like, which they weren't doing. They're like, she deleted her tweet. Like, there's no way people were booing her kids. But, when you look at it, even like last year when the Eagles played the 49ers um, for, I forget what game it was, but it was late in the playoffs, and uh, Joey Bosa was just getting chirped walking in the stadium, and he like fed into it, and he was so pissed off, or like when people just like boo shit or get mad. Like when fans really go out of their way to be dickheads, I find that so awesome and funny because that's just like true fandom. Like I, that's that's your Buffalo Bills fans. That's your Philadelphia Eagles fans. That's your... Detroit fans that's like depending on your New York like that's that's a Met fan right there like when fans have that hate and shit literally sort of like even though he asked whatever but when Matt Stafford finally got traded from the Lions first off after 12 years of not winning he gets traded and he just gets booed nonstop. it's like he was traded you know it wasn't like he was a free agent when like I'm out again he did facilitate the trade and kind of initiate it more, but he still got traded at the end of the day. So I just find that so, that so funny. So I just had to uh, um, add that in. Um, oh my God. We were talking about it in the office today. And I know um, last episode, I talked about how I saw Saltburn for the first time and a new light came out or new light, but something just came to light that is insane to me that in Saltburn, the scene where Barry Keegan has sex with the grave was not scripted. Not scripted. I find that insane. Now, don't get me wrong. I get it. Like, if you're a director, if you're in the that world, I'm guessing, obviously, like, if, a, if talent is going to go off script and just, like, do their thing, you're probably told, like, yo, let him, let him, let him cook. Let him cook. Do his thing. Like, take rest in peace take Heath Ledger and the Batman how a couple of Heath Ledger's like really creepy like scenes that somewhat became his most iconic because people were like what the fuck is this like when he was interrogating people those were just like off scripted and obviously Heath Ledger was out of his mind at the time so like I get why they were so good but those weren't scripted as me as a director I'm like oh yeah this is gonna hit this scene is gonna hit and it did imagine you and your crew of like 12 people behind the camera Barry Keegan finishes his scene where he's crying on top of the grave. Oh, what's Barry doing? Oh, oh, he's he's taking off his shirt. Oh, what? And he's hugging the ground again. Okay, okay. Wait, what? he's taking off his he's he's taking off his pants now. Oh, oh, his dick is out. Um. Oh, oh, he is having sex with the grave. He's having sex with Jacob Elordi's grave. That's crazy. And no one sat there like, yo, dude, do, do we do we cut? Do we stop? And I know that's not what they do in showbiz, but. I just think it's crazy that, because that whole movie was crazy, obviously. I talked about it last episode. But to think that him having sex with that grave, sound like someone here was here, was not scripted at all. Like, he just did that shit. And I, I truthfully find that so funny. Um, I'm trying to think of, oh yeah, going back to football talk real quick, that uh, I, I just know at some point in the future, um, Doctors are absolutely going to fight over Antonio Brown's brain. It's absolutely going to happen because it just look at his Twitter, his beef he had with Tom Brady, his weirdness with Tom Brady's wife, and him becoming a rapper at first. Him run like doctors are going to scramble to be the first person to study Antonio Brown's brain because that dude's CTE is fucking insane, absolutely insane. I'm trying to think. Oh, so this is another hot take where this podcast also knows I'm a big Selena Gomez person. This podcast knows this. I've been a big, I've been a Selena stan for a while, all the way from Wizards of Waverly Place to now, always been a Selena stan. But something that's really 
and it would annoy me with anybody doing it, is that it was recent that Selena Gomez yet again announced she's taking a break from social media. Within 12 hours, she was back on social media. Now I get it, right? Now, after I've been working in the social media managing space for a little while, I understand how it goes. Where the post she made initially after those 12 hours was for sure like someone on her team was just running her socials when she was like, it was it was like a brand that, po- like whatever. It, it most likely wasn't Selena. But then later in that same day, she made a post where it's like, oh yeah, this was definitely Selena posting on her story. And I don't understand. There's no like thought there of like oh maybe this is corny at this point of like self-thinking of like oh shoot like maybe I shouldn't like keep saying that I'm taking a break off social media and then never actually taking a break off social media that's just me because like it does get really fucking annoying um and it's starting to annoy me a little bit so Selena if you could if you could stop taking a break from social media the world needs you to stop taking a break from social media just be on or be off one or the other. Um, and I remember I'm, I would have told her that I missed my chance to meet her at sushi park across the street, which clearly is like the biggest celebrity hotspot, like in the world right now. Cause everyone seems to go there from like Joe Jonas and, uh, Sophia were there and Taylor Swift, Selena, Kaylee Teller. And let me just say this podcast also knows how big, of a Dua Lipa stan I am and Dua Lipa was walking in and out of dinner 400 feet away from my office last night probably an hour after I left the office and I got filled with intense sadness I was like god damn it because Dua Lipa is my like I need to meet Dua Lipa she seems awesome I love Dua Lipa so For her to be, like, and Emma loves Taylor Swift, so when Taylor Swift was at Sushi Park, it was like, fuck. Knowing Dua Lipa was, like, 50 yards away was bullshit. I was like, this is bullshit. A, I didn't get an invite to the dinner. Bullshit. B, I wasn't outside when it happened. Bullshit. C, my spidey senses did not tingle for me to be able to go meet Dua Lipa. And that's just something that I'm gonna gonna have to live with. And you know what? I'm going to be, this is part of like me wanting to be, uh, more delusional. Cause I feel like people who are delusional live their life with such bliss because they're delusional. Like just that everything in their world goes right because they're delusional. Like, and I feel like I love watching those people operate. I love watching them cook on a day to day basis where I'm just like, you are delusional. That's why you're having a great time because literally no one can tell you otherwise. Like it's, it's in your brain that like whatever's happening in reality is that's you. I'm thinking that might be 2024 for me. I might, I might have a delusional year. Don't know yet, but I think that's going to be mine that delusionally, I think me and Dua Lipa are going to meet organically. She's going to randomly be like, I like, I've seen your podcast. I want, I want to be on your podcast because you're awesome. And I'm just going to be like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dua Lipa come on the podcast. That's That's going to be my delusional thing. That's going to happen. So shout out Dua Lipa. Um, I'm trying to think. I was talking more about that. Um, Oh, I want to know if, I wonder if actors ever get, and probably not because it's work, but I wonder if actors ever get annoyed if they fit a description for a role too well. And if they're told what that description truthfully is like, oh, like we need, guy who seems dumb we need we need heavy guy we need you know girl who seems like a ditz we need this that and the third like i wonder if actors and actresses ever get annoyed where they're like god damn it like i fit this part way too well and you reached out telling me that i fit this part but this part was being a moron like i wonder if that's and given i'm sure that reach out was worth you know the actor making 10, 20, 30 million dollars. But I wonder if like, cause say if like my agent came to be like, Hey, yo, Casey, like I said, my agent, like I'm even at, like if I was an actor and my agent came to me, they're like, Hey Casey, like, uh, the studio came and they, like, they think you're perfect for this part. They really, really need you. And I'm like, Oh, what's the part? He's just like really fucking stupid guy. I'd be like, 
damn. Okay. Like, shit. Once you hear the money and, like, you know, the movie itself, you'd be like, oh, damn. Okay. Like, I like that. But then you got to sit there and be like, damn, like, I fit really fucking stupid guy. That's, that's what, that's my aura right now. And I don't know how I'd feel. I would do it because the check would be great and it'd probably be a funny movie. But I just wonder if, like, actors and actresses ever sit there like, damn, man, like, I didn't have to fit that role, like, that well. Like, it's kind of bullshit that you even say that. But you're paying me a lot of money to be in this cool movie, so I'm going to deal with it. Like, I want to fit cool guy that's good at talking and he's cool and does cool people shit, but he's also funny. Like, that's... That's also, that's going to be my delusion that someone's going to come to me and like, that's just going to be the perfect role for me. I'm going to be like, fuck yeah. Like cool delusional guy that is funny, but also really cool and people love. Sounds good. Um, I want more tattoos, but I'm kind of a pussy. Like I want to be tatted up all the way, but I only have one tattoo on my leg and I'm wearing pants so you can't see it. Like I would show you anyways. Um, and I literally almost passed out after eating, eating, after getting that tattoo. And that was pretty sad to see. Um, so I don't know if I'm meant to be a tattoo person or not. Cause like thinking about how painful it was just to get it on my leg. It's not like I got it on bone or anything like that. Just like upper leg, like right above the knee. And I almost passed out thinking about getting that on my ribs or my arms or other parts of my legs. I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know if that's a vibe. I'm not sure. Like, shit. So, that was, you know, maybe that won't be a change for me. Maybe, maybe my change will, because we were just talking about it today. We're just, maybe I'm one of those people that's just going to dye their hair soon. I'm just going to have, like, a, I'm going to have a change, and I'm going to dye my hair. And maybe that's, like, what is just meant for me. Because, unless anybody saw, King Kylie came back. Kylie Jenner posted on her Instagram the other day, dyeing her hair pink. I think that was a calling to all the people that want to dye their hair, like, do that shit. Because the King Kylie era was, I was probably, like, 15, maybe, at the time. Um, No, I was probably younger than that. Maybe I was, like, 14. I don't know. But the King Kylie era was fucking iconic when, A, she had her black G-Wagon. She was dyeing her hair all the time. She was in Ty Dolla Sign music videos and doing Tumblr. Like... That was such, and I wasn't really even on social media like that during that point, but I just like saw it all the time. And I'm like, yo, these people are fucking awesome. Turns out they were awesome. But that's when she dyed her hair all the time. And then she didn't really, she'd go from like maybe blonde to brunette again, blonde to brunette. But Kylie used to do pink, blue, red, yellow, green. Like she used to dye her everything and it like always just worked. Like whoever her hairstylist was, I don't know if it was Chris Appleton or not who we saw at Starbucks the other other day. Shout out Chris Appleton. Um, But no, it just worked and King Kylie is back to her fucking era. So shout out Kylie Jenner and Timothy Shamale, honestly. Um, I'm trying to think what else I was talking about that I wanted to touch on earlier. Oh my God. So I'm finally going to be able to uh, view, if if it's going to be part of the episode, but view myself in a sketch comedy series on Monday. Because, uh, Monday, Josh Richards sketch comedy that's coming out. We're having a viewing party for it. I got to play douchebag frat guy number one, and I thought my role was awesome. I actually had nothing crazy, maybe like three, four lines, nothing crazy. But I got to have a really fun speaking part in it. I thought the part was funny, hoping they keep it in. Um, but that should be really fun. I I actually think his sketch comedy series is going to do really well because like not a lot of people do sketch comedy series. And he's going to like put it on YouTube first. I think it's going to get picked up by a streamer. Absolutely. And then hopefully it can like amount to something more and they can get more like celebrity cameos and more just like love on it after it uh, airs too. So I'm hyped to watch that one come out. I think that one's going to be sick. And then no, I'm really trying to think of like any more updates so far of just like shit that's been going on. Like I got my little, I got my little sheet that, oh, one of them, that this was just something I really had to, it went back because my brother tweeted about um, Kevin Hart's movies definitely being a money laundering scheme because like, who watching it? Like, he's always just in some crazy movie. I'm 100% convinced 
that Arby's has to be a money laundering scheme because who is always going to Arby's and why are you, why is Arby's your number one place to go? That will never make sense to me where it's like, yeah, like I'm feeling fast food today. I'm feeling like something quick through the drive through. Let me get roast beef. Let me get pastrami and curly fries. Like that will never, I'll never understand that. Cause it's just like, why? Like, why Arby's? Like, I, I truthfully, it's got to be a money laundering front. Like, I just don't get it. They make billions. Arby's. Arby's makes billions. Like, mm-mm. Like, and honestly, right now, if I had to go top five fast food chains for Casey personally, I'm going Taco Bell, number one. McDonald's, number two. Chick-fil-A, number three. Wendy's number four, and I'm talking about drive through places. Um, I'm trying to think what else has a drive through, and I probably go Burger King number five just because like, I don't know what other place would have a drive through. So, those would probably have to be my top five fast food places. Arby's wouldn't even be on the list. I'm, I mean, I've never had Arby's, never gonna have Arby's. Um, so, and Taco Bell is just king shit. Taco Bell's always been king shit. Um, and Oh, yeah. Speaking of fucking king shit, since they don't do anything anyways in terms of like politically, like all that type of shit, I absolutely think America should start having their royal families. I think and I already know who it should be, but sort of like how the royal family in England doesn't actually like have any like say in government and stuff like they used to not anymore, but like they're more just like big figureheads at this point now. I absolutely think America should adopt that. And America should for sure have a royal family. It would probably go over so swell. Very much sarcasm. But I feel like entertainment-wise, it would be awesome. And I absolutely think it should be the Kardashian family. I 100% think the Kardashians are America's royal family. Because, bro, think about the lineage from Bruce Jenner, Kris Jenner. Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, Kourtney Kardashian, Rob Kardashian, Kendall Jenner, Kylie Jenner, Travis Scott, Devin Booker, Travis Barker, Scott Disick, Kanye West, um, Tristan Thompson, Corey Gamble. Like, North is basically famous at this point, too. Like, she's the first kid that's going to blow up. Like, crazy. Like, crazy roster of a family. Like, imagine being Stormy and being like, oh, my dad is... Travis Scott and my mom is Kylie Jenner who's dating Timothy Chalamet and my aunt's Kendall Jenner and my other uncle's Kanye West and my grandpops is a fucking Olympic decathlon what like crazy so that's why I absolutely think the Kardashians are America's royal family 100% so we should just like crown people at first and I know oh part of what I love about this is how mad people would get like it would fucking matter like anything of like their finances or like lifestyle would change because they're already they they live like royalty, but I just think it would be so funny to finally put a title on like the yeah Kardashians are a royal family because I I firmly believe that they are absolutely I will stand behind that shit, um, and fucking I just had to comment because again this podcast knows I'm a big stan of her. Khloe Kardashian did a uh, Tomorrow Magazine shoot, and my God, anyone. Anyone who talks shit on Khloe Kardashian, fuck you. Not cool to me. Don't get me wrong. I get it. I know she's had some unluckiness in the in the finding a partner department. I know she's been very forgiving. I understand all that. Haven't we all? Not really. But just like I know she's been very forgiving and lenient in that department. But regardless, where she was when she started keeping up with the Kardashians to now, you put some fucking respect on Khloe Kardashian's name. I'm telling you, you do that. And Good Americans killing it. Like, psh. shout out Khloe Kardashian. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goofy ass. Like, uh, sorry, my brother just sent something in one of our group chats that I thought was uh, very funny. But no, I'm trying to really think of like what else. Cause I want to start giving some like funny, just like some funny longer episodes. You know what I mean? Just like give some takes. Oh, the podcast knows how I feel about Ariana Grande. So. She came out with a song, Congrats, um, called Yes And, which when the song came out, she was definitely alluding to like how people are talking about her life. And I'm going to leave it at that. The podcast knows how I feel about um, 
Ariana Grande completely. But, oh, another thing I can't wait for is, and I really hope she goes to the game, is Taylor Swift and Buffalo Bills fans. I think that will be electric, where Taylor's going to be coming in on her private 747. I don't think she has a 747, but Taylor's going to be flying in on her private jet, and she's just going to like look out the window to just seeing mobs of people jumping onto fiery, broken tables. And she's just going to be like, what the fuck am I walking into? Because essentially, most of the game she's been in has been at Arrowhead, where obviously people are going to love her, and then MetLife, which is New York City. She hasn't gone to Buffalo yet. And when she walks and just sees these fans, like there was a funny, that one meme picture of Hillary Clinton inside someone's house just looking around like, and it's like when Taylor Swift is entering her holiday Inn in Buffalo, she's just like, what the fuck is this? So I think Taylor Swift going to Buffalo is going to be very, very funny. Um, and I cannot wait for that game, honestly. Oh. My girly girl texting me. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Ooh, Apple was just banned from selling their new watches in the U.S. for like some blood alcohol shit. So that's one more thing that I always think it's so funny when, I hear, when I'll hear conspiracy. Like, oh, Apple has warped your brain so that you always, you're dependent on it. And like, so have these big corporations. Yeah. Yeah, they have. I'm that person that like they're talking about, and I love it. Like, I'm never gonna use a technology that's not Apple. I don't mean cameras and shit, but laptops, phones. Like, I'm never like headphones. I'm never gonna use something that's not Apple. Apple for sure has a hold on me. Absolutely. Starbucks coffee absolutely has a hold on me. Not gonna be drinking another coffee like from a chain like that. They got a hold on me. Or I'm trying to think of like any other like bigger brand like Nikes. Like, yeah, I'll probably get a couple more pair of shoes, but like bigger brand. I'm just like, yeah, like I'm, I'm your guy. I'm your demographic. You know, I'm going to buy this shit. You know, I'm going to eat it up. So I just find that so funny that, um, I, I fit the conspiracy demographic. Um, but no, I'd say that was a fun ass little episode. Got to talk some shit. Always love being here late. Um, I know I say at the end of that every episode so far, but we're going to get some cool people on this year. I'm, I'm, I'm working it out. I'm working it out. But hopefully in the next couple episodes, we'll have another guest, be able to talk some bullshit. I just hope that 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, whoever watches these solo episodes, I hope people enjoy them. I hope people find them entertaining um, because I fucking love doing them. Um, Yeah, and we're going to be here and continuing to do this shit. And I love for everyone who does watch. And this shit's just fun for me. So that's episode 26. We're going to be back for more, I promise. And until next time. Peace.